I'm Sharla with Freezer Meals 101. Welcome! Today we're going to be making freezer meals for one or two people. We're actually making freezer meals for my uh, dad who lives alone and my mother-in-law who lives by herself. So I thought this would be a great way to show you how to make meals for yourself if you live on your own or if there's only two of you. I get that question a lot and obviously because I'm a mom of seven, I'm not usually making meals for just one or two, but it's become something that I've started doing the last year or so. Um, in the past, I've done it for my mother-in-law. I thought this time that I would do some for my dad too. And honestly, it was a little bit more challenging planning the meals because they have really different tastes. My dad likes things that are mild, and my mother-in-law likes things spicy. Um, my dad loves seafood. My mother-in-law can't stand seafood, so, you know, I've kind of had to pick some meals that are in the middle uh, to make sure that it accommodates for both of them. But I think we've got some really good things planned today. So come along with me as I show you how to make meals for just one or two people and um, how easy it is to meal prep this way. So the first meal we're going to do is just super simple butter chicken. What I did is I went ahead yesterday and cooked up some chicken on a tray. Now when I make freezer meals for us, I don't use a lot of cooked chicken because I like to just put the chicken in raw and then I can bake it, do it in the crock pot, barbecue it, whatever, when we're actually eating it. But for the purposes of these meals, I want them to be able to just grab a container and microwave it. I want it to be able to go from the freezer to the microwave or for them to just thaw it and heat it in the microwave. I don't want them to have to worry about turning the oven on or the skillet or whatever. I don't want them to have to do a lot of dishes. So this is supposed to be to help them out and that's why I've done a lot of the cooking ahead just to make it easier for them. So we've got a huge bowl of cooked cube chicken and I'm gonna go ahead and just mix the butter chicken sauce. This is as easy as it gets. I just purchased butter chicken sauce. So all I'm doing is pouring that in a bowl and adding chicken until I think it's kind of about the right consistency as far as like chicken to sauce ratio. Okay, I'm really happy with this chicken to sauce ratio. So that's ready to go into my containers. Just talk about the containers for a second. Uh, these are containers that are dishwasher safe, microwave safe, and freezer safe. So you can just purchase these on Amazon. I've gotten them before through Groupon, but I don't remember what company that was. So this is one that I have left from that set. And I have another one in the dishwasher that I'm gonna add later. Um, and this one I just got, this set of 25 I just got off Amazon. So um, I was thinking that 25 was gonna be enough. Well, 26, 27. But then when I started planning out the meals today, when it was too late to order <laughs> more containers, I realized that 25 is not gonna be enough for what I had planned. So I'm also going to do some of the meals in medium-sized bags, which I was planning to do the soups in the bags anyway, but I'm going to have to do more than just the soups in the bags because I didn't, you know, I didn't think it through very well. I was thinking 25 sounded like a lot, but when I think about how many days there are in a month and the fact that I'm now doing it for my mother-in-law and my dad, so it's two separate households, it's not actually going to um, stretch as far as I need it to. So anyway, that's the containers we're using. I had gone ahead and made some basmati rice already, so I'm going to scoop that into the containers. I let it cool a bit just because I don't want um, too much moisture. If I have the rice that's too hot, put it in here, and then I go to put it in the freezer, you're gonna get more moisture in there and that can lead to freezer burn. So I've let the rice cool. I'm gonna go grab that now. 
So I think the best thing to do here is to spoon the um, butter chicken first so that I know how many containers I'm gonna need rice for. The great thing about rice is if you cook too much, you can actually freeze cooked rice. So, and then if you're really running behind one day, you can take out a freezer meal that's got your protein and then you already have that cooked rice. You can just warm it up and you're ready to eat. So, I don't mind having too much rice. So now to each of these, it just made six, so not a huge amount. I could have easily um, doubled it and made 12, but I'm also trying to conserve my containers a bit today. But I do have a second jar of butter chicken, and if I had thought out the containers better, I would have um, done 12. But anyway, this is a good example for you of what you can do. So you can always make 12 if you'd like. So we're gonna add that basmati rice onto the other side. And now I'm gonna add some frozen peas right in the middle. This will ensure that it's a more balanced meal. Plus, I really like the taste of peas with butter chicken, so I think it will go nicely. Okay, so just like that, we've got six meals that are butter chicken, peas, and basmati rice completely ready um, to go from freezer to microwave and make a complete dinner. So I'm pretty happy with that and it just took a few minutes. Thanks to the prep of the chicken that I did yesterday, of course. I don't wanna pretend like this is faster than it actually is, but really, truly, if you wanna take a Saturday afternoon, you can make a lot of meals for yourself. So I'm just gonna move these off to the side and then we'll get going with our next recipe. So the next thing that I wanna make is just a really simple vegetarian taco soup. It's kind of just like dumping cans in. Now, if I was making this for our family as a one full freezer meal for a family size, then I would throw all these cans just into the bag, which makes it easier, makes less dishes, takes one step out. But because I'm dividing it into a lot of smaller bags um, for you know smaller sizes, what I'm gonna do is mix everything together in a bowl and um, then I can transition that into the bags. So let me go grab a bowl and I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully this bowl will be big enough. I'm kind of second guessing that right now, but <laughs> whatever. If you've watched my videos before, you know I kind of fly by the seat of my pants and then I make it work no matter what. So um, speaking of that, if you are interested in more meal prep ideas or freezer meal recipes and tips, you can subscribe to me here and then you can see all the videos where I um, attempt to try out new recipes or show you our tried and true ones. Okay, an electric can opener is a must. I don't tell you to get a lot of kitchen gadgets, but if you're gonna be making a lot of freezer meals, then electric can opener is something that you do probably want to invest in. You can totally just use a regular can opener if you're just making a few, but if you're making a lot at a time, then it's gonna be worth your time, your money to invest in the electric can opener. So this is just a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, and then we're going to do a can of um, white kidney beans and a can of dark red kidney beans. Those ones we are going to drain and rinse. So this is, I just finished telling you that I'm not gonna tell you to get all kinds of kitchen gadgets. So I'm not telling you you need this because you totally don't. But this is uh, like something that measures and you can drain and rinse in the sink. So this is what I use to rinse my cans in the sink. Um, and I use it also if you're doing frozen spinach and you need to 
um, squeeze the moisture out of it. This works really well too, but you don't need one of these. <laughs> so um, just do your, however you regularly rinse your cans. I'm off to open the, actually I'll open the cans and then I'm off to rinse them in the sink and then I will be back to throw those into our soup. So that's a 19 ounce can of white kidney beans and 19 ounce can of dark red kidney beans. Okay, now we're doing a can of diced green chilies. We're doing a can of tomato sauce and it's supposed to have a 12 ounce ounce can of corn but I put a grocery order in which I don't usually do I usually go to the grocery store but I put a grocery order in yesterday for these groceries and they gave me this little baby can of corn and this is not 12 ounces I don't know what it is it's 199 milliliters, whatever that works out to be, but it is teeny tiny. So it is not what I was hoping for the corn, but we're gonna use it because it's what we have. And normally I have frozen corn always, so I could just throw that in, but I don't think I do. So we're just using this tiny little thing of corn. Uh, we're not gonna drain that because well, it's little, and also it's a soup, so the liquid will be just fine. Now we're gonna do the tomato sauce, and just setting my cans over here because I'm going to rinse them all out later so I can recycle them. Uh, now, We've got two tablespoons of taco seasoning. Okay, two tablespoons taco seasoning. You don't necessarily have to measure this, but because I'm making it for other people and not for our family, I'm a little bit more careful. Now my mother-in-law is in her 80s and as she's gotten older, she's started to eat less and less meat because it just makes her feel better. So. That is another reason why I chose this vegetarian taco soup, but this is a soup that our family eats quite a bit. So all we need now are onions, and I had my daughter help me chop the onions earlier. We have that fun said whom chopper, and it's so easy, and it's really easy to get the kids to help me now with chopping because it's fun and it's like they're getting their frustrations out when they're chopping onions. Anyway, so just got half a cup, I just estimated, but half a cup of onions. That's seriously it. It's a nice and colorful soup. It would be more colorful if it had the right amount of corn, but you know, you win some, you lose some. And yeah, I'm just double checking the recipe, that's it. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is give that a stir, and then I'm gonna spoon it into these medium size bags. So those are quart size bags for those of you that are American. For our family, we obviously would put the whole soup and just, you know, dump it right in there into a gallon size bag. But if you're cooking for just one or two, then these quart size bags are perfect. Or even if you have a large family, but you want to make something if you're working from home or if you're staying at home and you wanna make just lunches for yourself, this is the perfect size. You can transfer this into just a small stovetop pot, heat it up, simmer it, and you can have lunch at home just for one or two of you. It's perfect. So we're gonna just, feeling like that's enough. Don't wanna give them too much and have them have so many leftovers that they get sick of these meals. So just want to take out all the air because air is the enemy for freezer meals. That's what causes your freezer burn. So we've got a little package right there 
of vegetarian taco soup. These are going to be just perfect. to mention that it also calls for one and a half cups water but I purposely didn't put them in the bags because then the bags get pretty fat and they're harder to stack and take up more room in the freezer so I'll just make a note on each of the four bags to add about three quarters of a cup of water when they make it in the pot and that way it will take up less room in the freezer and still work perfectly so the next recipe that I'm working on is a chicken a la king. I've never actually done chicken a la king as a freezer meal, so I'm hoping it'll work well. I think it will, just based on what I know of freezer meals. I am adapting the recipe a little bit. It's a recipe from the stay-at-home chef, but I'm adapting it for the freezer. So instead of using milk, I'm using evaporated milk. And um, I also added red peppers to it because growing up we just always had red pepper in our chicken ala king, so <laughs> just seems like that's the way it should be for me. Uh, right now I have the butter um, on the stove with mushrooms and the red pepper, so I'm just sauteing that up. Again, if I was doing freezer meals for our family, I wouldn't be cooking things up ahead, but because I want them to just be able to throw these in their microwave and eat and have everything ready, I'm doing as much as I can for them up ahead of time. So I'm just getting that going and I'll make the sauce and then I'll add in the cooked chicken and put them in the containers. For this, they can serve it with rice, pasta, or they can actually have it on toast. I know that a lot of people like to have it on toast. So I think this will be a really perfect meal for both of them. Okay, so I, like I said, I haven't made chicken alley king as a freezer meal before, so I did it with evaporated milk rather than milk because milk doesn't freeze and thaw very well. The texture consistency gets to be off. So I just have in the skillet kind of made that like flour, evaporated milk, chicken stock mixture along with sauteing my mushrooms and green peppers in butter. And now I'm going to add the chicken and, and I'm realizing, again, I'm pretty spatially challenged. I'm realizing that this skillet is not going to fit this plus the peas plus four cups of chicken. So I'm going to grab another container. I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> this will be a bit better because it's 24 cups. So I don't need to have any spatial knowledge to know that I can fit what's in this skillet and four cups of chicken and a cup of peas and some pimentos in this. So we'll start with the chicken. So I added four cups of that cooked cubed chicken and now I'm just going to pour what's in this skillet. Actually, I'm going to get a spoon to help me with that and I'm going to pour what's in this skillet in here and then we're supposed to add um, some drained pimentos and some peas. When you're choosing what freezer meals to make, if you use similar ingredients, it saves you time and money. Um, several of the dishes that I chose today I'm using peas for and quite a few I'm using chicken for. That saved me time because I prepped the chicken all together and it saves money because I can buy the peas in bulk. So even if you live on your own and you don't think that you can save money, by buying things in case lot or bulk because they'll go bad before you can use them. Freezer cooking is a great way to get around that. 
And if you want to save even more, you can get together with a friend and do your freezer cooking and then they can take half home and you can keep half. So we're putting in our drained pimentos. I also like that that's going to add a pop of color. There's already red in there because of the red peppers, but it's just another pop of color, which I like. And then the peas, again with the color, right? So just one cup of the peas. And now that recipe is done. Put that together and then I'm gonna scoop it into these microwave safe containers. Okay, so we have another meal finished, our chicken a la king, and again, they can eat this with rice, pasta, or on toast. The next thing we're going to make is chicken fried rice. Now, this chicken fried rice recipe, I know my dad is going to love it because it's my Tan Giselle's recipe, and she is his sister, and he thinks she's about the best cook in the world. So I know this one is a really safe bet for him. So. We're gonna start with four cups of rice that's already cooked. And I let that cool a bit as well. And then we're going to add more of this cooked cubed chicken. Now we're gonna add a cup of frozen peas. Again, I'm using this giant thing of peas for many of these recipes. So it was much less expensive to buy these in bulk. And normally this recipe calls for celery, but I'm allergic to celery, so I don't even like to uh, have to cut it or hold it or anything like that. When I'm doing freezer meals with my neighbor, Christy, she takes care of the celery for her family's meals, um, cuts it, adds it, all of that. And I, of course, avoid adding celery into our meals. So um, I'm not adding the celery today. If I had one of my kids helping me, I could have had them chop up the celery and add it. But anyway, if you wanna make this recipe at home, and I will put all the recipe links in the description down below, so you can easily grab those recipes, but if you wanna make it yourself, add celery, because the recipe calls for it. Um, next, we're gonna do our uh, carrots. So just one cup of diced carrots. I had gone ahead and um, chopped all my vegetables and gotten everything prepped before, because that just also saves so much time. And then you know you have everything you need and that everything's ready to go. So I'm gonna put in, this is a two cup container, so I'm putting in half of that for this recipe. And then we're doing a can of sliced water chestnuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that here. Just gonna head off to the sink to drain that. I'll be right back. The magic of video editing, I am back already. And toss that in there. And then we're gonna add, like this is a very easy recipe. There's not a lot of ingredients to it, but it's just a really, really nice one. It's a clear winner. And oh my goodness, this is hard to open. Okay, so Another trick for my freezer meals is I buy my garlic already minced. I know it's a giant jar, but we go through so much of it when we do, um, my neighbor and I do three months of meals at a time. So we do 
about 130 meals each time, 125, 140 in there. So we obviously go through a lot. So I'm just gonna add some minced garlic to that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add um, two tablespoons of oyster sauce and four tablespoons of soy sauce. Now, when I was growing up, my Tante Chazelle would make this chicken fried rice for like every potluck, every Christmas dinner, everything. Like I grew up eating this so often. So for me, it's a kind of comfort food, honestly. And so I know my dad's gonna love it. Okay, we're gonna mix this all up together. Honestly, now that I'm looking at this, I could have doubled it. It would have been so easy to double. I wonder if I should just add some more rice. It's not like they're gonna complain about getting more meals, right? And I've made the rice, I have the chicken. I might as well. Yeah, I'm gonna one and a half times it. I think, because I don't think I have enough rice to quite double it. I'm going to check that. Hold on. Yeah, it looks like this is about two cups left. So I'm going to one and a half times this recipe. They'll both end up with more. And I'll use up all of that rice. I still have some of that basmati rice left over. And I'm just going to go ahead and freeze that for our family to eat as a side dish. But um, the rice that I was using for the chicken fried rice, now I've completely used it up, which is perfect. And I'll add a little bit more carrots. Okay, this is really beautiful. It's colorful, which we've already established makes me think that a recipe is healthy and therefore makes me happy and it's done which is also lovely and I think probably get maybe eight meals out of it we'll see again spatially challenged so I actually have no idea how many meals we'll get out of it short so I have to go around the other way <laughs> so excuse me I was planning to make a pasta but I'm going to run out of containers for that so the last thing that I want to do today because I'll put the pasta to another day after I have a chance to order more containers is that I want to make some stir-fry bags I know that my dad enjoys making stir fries they're really easy for him to put in a skillet and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make them vegetarian but this way they can add um, obviously my mother-in-law is not gonna add shrimp since she hates seafood but she could add beef or chicken strips or she could keep it vegetarian and my dad can add um, some shrimp to his or some beef strips so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a really simple stir fry sauce with some orange juice, some sesame oil. I honestly don't know what I'm doing when I make stir fry sauces, but they always taste good. So just kind of throw things in and it seems to work out okay. Um, I'm gonna do some soy sauce and a little bit of oyster sauce. Oh no, my mother-in-law will hate that. Oh, okay, can't do the oyster sauce. Want to. But can't so oh well I'm gonna add some ginger and I think for the garlic because it doesn't always mix in very well I'll just add it to the individual bags so I'm gonna give this a stir oh I have to use a different spoon because I'm being very sensitive to her seafood her seafood issues let's see Hmm, that is 
very sesame oil forward. It's not great. Okay, I'm gonna add more orange juice and more soy sauce. This is gonna be good now. Okay, lovely, lovely. And maybe a little bit more ginger. Again, my mother-in-law likes things with a kick. So it's not spicy, but ginger has that, you know, little tiny kick. Not too much for my dad though. Okay, so in our stir fry bags, where did I put my bags? Here we go, not completely losing my mind. Okay, so in our stir fry bags, just gonna add some of what we have left from other things. So I'll add some carrots and onions. I cut up some red pepper strips and some zucchini. Add all of that. And when I was doing the um, chicken a la king, I sliced some mushrooms for that and then did some extra ones for these stir fried eggs. And again, just a bit of that garlic. And we'll pour half the sauce in there. So that was really easy. You could make a lot of these. These are just, you know, cook up really easily, really fast in a skillet, and then serve it on rice. And you have a complete meal, especially if you add a protein. You could even add cashews, something like that. So there you go, stir fry bag. One more and then we're done. So we ended up with 26 individual meals and some of them I think there will be leftovers so they'll probably get like a supper and a lunch out of it, which is great. And that means they'll have 13 each. I was kind of hoping to do like two weeks worth each so if I'd gotten to do the pasta then they would have had more than two weeks each and I would have felt a little better about that but whatever you, know, you just gotta roll with it sometimes now I'll tell you what I was planning for the pasta just in case you want to whip it up yourself and then I was planning to use these containers is I was going to make a macaroni and cheese so with a homemade sauce and do that as one of the pasta meals and then I was planning to do a pasta bake where I fried up some zucchini, red pepper, onion, um, mushrooms, you know, some of the vegetables, and then uh, just added a store bought tomato sauce and the pasta, and then layered or placed them in each of these containers. And then I would have put a layer of matzo cheese on there so that that would melt in the microwave. The pasta would already be cooked and it would be a meal all ready to go. So thank you for joining me today as we talked about how to make freezer meals just for one or two people. There's obviously a lot of other recipes that you can make for that and I'll be showing you that the next time that I make meals for my mother-in-law or my dad or both. Freezer meals are a great way to save time in the kitchen and money. So I hope these tips helped you today and happy cooking.